Central Sand utilizes two steam-driven aeration air blowers to supply dissolved oxygen to our aeration basins as well as provide channel mixing to our final effluent channel and pre-aeration tanks located at the primary sedimentation tanks. Steam for the turbines is supplied by a collection of boilers located in the solids control building. These include a waste heat boiler, cogeneration unit boiler, and two auxiliary boilers. Producing all of our steam in-house to drive the turbines provides a tremendous electrical cost savings for the district due to the fact producing aeration air for the activated sludge process with an electric blower is very costly. In addition, the turbines are equipped with condensers that convert unused steam back to water known as condensate which is pumped back to the solids building for reuse. This provides additional cost savings as well as environmental benefits by ultimately recycling, reusing, and saving a significant amount of water. In this video, we will go over how to start an aeration turbine. When starting the aeration turbine, always remember to work slowly and with extreme caution when working with steam and always have the appropriate PPE and tools. This includes a hard hat, gloves, earplugs, safety glasses, and a 12 inch pipe wrench or crow's foot. To start the aeration turbine, a series of events must occur in sequence and with proper timing. The sequence and timing are coordinated by a PLC located in the red control panel of each turbine. During each step of the startup sequence, the PLC opens valves and drains such as the steam bypass valves and checks for satisfactory performance such as proper condenser vacuum. It is important to know that any step that has not been completed will be blinking in blue in the upper right hand corner of the MMI. Once the step is complete, the lettering will be black. The PLC can be manually moved by pressing the interlock bypass button on the front of the turbine control panel. Prior to starting the aeration turbine, make sure that all locks and tags are removed if starting the turbine following a shutdown. Ensure the two water is lined up to the vacuum pump rotometer located on the seal water manifold near the pump. You can use three water low pressure if two water is unavailable. Next. Close the condenser drain valve located on the bottom of the condenser and open the purifier and separator drain valves. There are two valves on the separator and one valve on the purifier. Go to the ground floor of the pump and blower building and check that the cooling water for the lube oil skid is valved in. Start the auxiliary lube oil pump for the 30 minute warm up by depressing the local lockout stop located at the pump. The pump should automatically start. The auxiliary pump will run until the turbine comes online, at which point the main lube oil pump should come online. Next, open the drain line in between the two isolation steam valves located under the turbine in the pump and blower building basement and completely bleed the water out of the line by slowly opening the steam discharge valve all the way. You should see water drain from the separator and purifier drains. You may need to pinch back on the drain lines due to the volume of steam coming from the lines. Now, ensure the inlet and outlet condenser cooling lines are open. Align the condenser cooling water strainer valves. Place the strainer in hand prior to starting the pump and open the gate valve vent on top of the strainer. Make sure the strainer drain is shut and the flush water is valved in. Start the condenser cooling water pump and close the strainer vent when water comes out. Slowly warm up and pressurize the steam line to the turbine using the 1 inch steam bypass valve on the 14 inch steam line. After approximately one hour, slowly open the main steam valve. 
At this point, close all the drains. Do not leave the drains cracked. Turn on the three water low pressure cooling water to the condenser intercooler to 300 gallons per minute, which is marked in the rotometer. If there is not sufficient vacuum being produced by the vacuum pump, open the valve to the hogger pump or change the valve on the vacuum pump to the second stage. Next, open the main aeration air header, then go back to the pump and blower building ground floor and verify the trip and throttle valve and the master relay are reset. If not, close the trip and throttle valve by spinning the wheel clockwise. Press the alarm acknowledge and alarm reset button then press the master relay reset button. Verify the turbine master switch OK light is on, then open the trip and throttle valve by slowly spinning the wheel counterclockwise. Verify the valve stays latched and the master relay OK light is lit. Check the solenoid valve positions are set properly by going to the proper solenoid position screen on the MMI. Verify each valve is in the proper position according to the position on the screen. If you need to change the position of the valve, use an ink pen or something similar to operate the solenoid and change the valve position. Inform the shift supervisor and the solids control building that you'll be starting the turbine. The shift supervisor will then take the air wasting valve off control. Now press start. The PLC will automatically step through to step 8 for a 30 minute warm up. Press the hold button so the turbine doesn't automatically go online following the 30 minute warm up. At this point, the turbine should be running at approximately 1200 to 1800 RPM. After 30 minutes, make sure the inlet guide vanes are in local and notify the control room and the solids building operator that the turbine will come online. When the program reaches step 13 and the turbine speed is 3800 RPM, the MMI will ask you to increase the guide vanes in flashing blue text. If another turbine is online, then place the turbine in bypass by pressing the mode select button on the MMI and then press turbine bypass before increasing the guide vanes. If the other turbine is offline, Use the open close toggle to increase the header pressure to 8 psi on the MMI display. The inlet guide vanes must be more than 25% to satisfy step 13 and advance to step 14. Once the 25% is satisfied, the blower bypass valve will shut and you will be at step 15 online. Raise the guide vanes in hand until you reach a header pressure of 8 to 8.2 psi. Now ask the shift supervisor to place the guide vanes in remote. The shift supervisor will now select the proper airflow meter by pressing the waste valve button on the main turbine schematic. Select between F5311, F5312, or F5313, then press auto under the control mode portion of the box. You are now online. After the turbine has been online without issues for about 20 minutes, go to the other turbine and press the stop button. Go cycle the under drains located in T7 to get rid of any condensate that might be in the airline. If you have any questions or concerns, don't ever hesitate to contact a shift supervisor for more information. This concludes our look at the aeration air blower startup procedure. The aeration blowers are a key component to assuring the plant operates correctly and stays in compliance. The blowers have a lot of moving parts and the system is complex, so do your homework, never hesitate to ask questions, and best of luck in your continued operator training.